My main thing is the misunderstanding of body dysmorphic disorder, of body dysmorphia, right? Because I feel like I see so many tweets of people being like, my body dysmorphia going off, or TikTok's like, oh, my body dysmorphia. And they don't, they don't have body dysmorphia, they just don't like how they look. Yeah. Or they perceive themselves differently, um, sort of on different days because of how their self-image is. And, you know, they, they just, they just don't like how they look. And not liking how you look is kind of a normal-ish thing, right? A lot of people don't like how they look. And that's not to say that, you know, it's perfectly fine to not like how you look and you should just shut up and deal with it. But be clear in what you're talking about because you don't have body dysmorphia just because you don't like how you look. You, you're, if you're not obsessing for hours on end a day, if it's not significantly impacting your, you know, your work, your social and your sort of educational life, like all of those different aspects of your life, then like you, you don't have body dysmorphia in the same sense that if you find it difficult to pay attention every now and then, uh, or you get distracted every now and then, you don't have ADHD. That's not how it works. It, it, if it's not significantly impacting your life and if you're not obsessing over it so like for hours on end and, you know, doing thing, like doing all of these other sorts of things that, that people do, like sort of like um, mentally, uh, like a, a mental sort of preoccupation or buying excess makeup or buying a ton of clothes or, you know, hitting the gym constantly to make yourself look different, even though you, like, you can't see any real sort of change. Like if you're not doing that sort of stuff, then you're not going to get diagnosed with body dysmorphia. And it's not fair to people that have body dysmorphia. 20% of the kids that have it, as we said, drop out of school. It's not fair to those people to say, I have body dysmorphia, when you you just don't like how you look. The only thing I think feels um, fair to say on that, though, is that I think that although, yes, they don't have body dysmorphia, and it is an incorrect use of the word, um, I think it is helpful to have concepts like that. If you feel bad about the way you look, or you feel... Mm -hmm you can't focus. It is, to a certain extent, helpful to have phrases um, like that in order to go, and if you are if you don't like the way you look, using the word body dysmorphia in that sort of colloquial sense mm. um, is sort of a way of thinking that goes, okay, this is my perception, it's not necessarily true. And if I'm feeling lazy, if I'm feeling like it's not, it's not that I am lazy, it's that I have a motivation issue today. I'm not feeling very motivated rather than just, I'm lazy, I'm a slob, mm. I'm stupid. Well, that, yeah, that is that is fine. And I think it kind of works with like depression and depressed, right? So if someone says, a lot of people that have depression, well, not a lot, some people that have depression don't like when people say, oh, I'm depressed. And I understand that to some degree because it can feel invalidating of your own sort of struggles. Interestingly, like when we, in, in conversation, you know, we can say, oh yeah, I'm I'm feeling really depressed today because depression is kind of like, it, it is a feeling that one can have, right? Yeah. And so we can say, oh, I'm feeling depressed today and that's fine. Whereas if someone says, I am depressed, that's kind of a different vibe from saying I'm I feeling depressed. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have depression today. Yeah. Uh, so there's kind of different things there. And the thing is that there are phrases to describe this. Oh yeah, I, like, I have a really like sort of warped self-image, you know? Like my 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 self-esteem is like, like I've got really low self-esteem today and like my self-image is like all over the place. You know, you could say that I'm having like issues, I'm having attentional issues today. Like I'm having motivational issues today or you know, I've, I've got, I've really got issues with motivation in the same sense that you wouldn't say oh, I've got an eating disorder because you had no appetite for like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like yeah. the other, what is it? The other... Gosh, the other oh week, I can't remember what was going on. Off the day. <laughs> Look, this is it. Breakfast. Look, that's it. Once. But yeah. the other week, I had a few days where I was feeling like I didn't have much of an appetite. I didn't know why. I didn't really know what was going on with me. Mm. But all I knew was that I was finding it difficult to eat and I didn't really want to because I wasn't really enjoying it very much. And so I was finding myself like avoiding it because yeah. I wasn't, you know, like I, I, I didn't have a huge appetite. And so when I did eat, I was like, this is this is a chore. So I was avoid like I wasn't eating very much, and that was only like for a few days or whatever. And I'm I'm fine, you know, whatever. I'm I'm good. Don't worry about me. But I wouldn't have been like, oh yeah, my anorexia today is just going off. Yeah. Right. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's it's, it's so bad today. Wow. Oh, me, I'm so quirky. It's not. It's not just that. I understand that people need words to describe what they're going through. The words are there. I just feel like people like to, or people feel a need to sort of, um, in some cases, exaggerate or be like. It is. This is how bad it is. Like, use the use the most use the or sort have of like a thing. To, yeah, to validate this themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I think another aspect of it as well, which is a totally like sort of innocuous, not innocuous, but a totally sort of innocent sort of thing in this sort of ignorance, is that 
they just don't know what body dysmorphia means. Yeah, they yeah, don't know yeah, how yeah, yeah, of absolutely insanely intense it can be. Because I, I mean, I genuinely just from like osmosis, really cultural osmosis, I just assumed that body dysmorphia was having a warped self image. Yeah, I just that's, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. But it, it's it's not. As it's OCD, the DSM, really. So it, kind it of has to affect your daily life. Yeah. All the time to an extreme degree. Yeah. But not just that. Yeah, I mean, yes, that. But I think for me, the the de- like the real defining factor between uh body dysmorphic disorder and sort of just having a warped self image is that you spend hours obsessing. Mm. Yeah, it's like and and not even the length of time that one spends obsessing, just the fact that there is this obsession, right? Yeah. Because like you can th- like Look, I perceive myself differently every now and then when I look in the mirror. I can look in the mirror one day and be like, wow, looking twits. <laughs> looking twits. <laughs> and then, you know, I, like, I'm like i feeling a bit low. And then the next day, I, I, like, I'm like feeling down myself. And I'm, like, I look in the mirror like you know, a couple days later. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you disgust me. I hope, you, I hope you burn in a fire. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Why do like, you go outside? <laughs> exactly. And I look at, like, you know what I mean? And that's just a couple days difference. So I'm not going to change in my looks that much. But like, how like I feel like your self image can be affected by, you know, how you feel like your self esteem, yeah. how you're feeling about yourself. And look, maybe there's something like real wrong with me that's got me like looking at myself and being like, oh, I've I like I feel differently about how I look, you know, based Body on this morphia popping off. Yeah, exactly. Right. Maybe maybe I'm the weird one, but I feel like feeling differently about how you look on different days is a fairly normal thing fair, fair. well ha- having your mood fluctuate sometimes is a fairly normal thing and then having your mood affect how you feel about yourself is a fairly normal thing yeah, yeah exactly and fairly normal things i just feel like if you're if you're not daily sort of spending like you know lots of time just obsessing over a specific feature it's hard it would be hard to to make a case for having of saying you've got body dysmorphia and i understand wanting to like not understanding that and you know being like oh my gosh why i was saying the wrong thing that's totally fine it's totally fine to say the wrong thing like it, it's cool you know now you you don't do it and if you see others doing it be like hey look that's not what body dysmorphia is i just think that it, this sort of thing leads to a misunderstanding of what these things are adhd is seen as like what oh sorry i got distracted but oh that's, yeah oh. that's not what it is like i got diagnosed with adhd and it it messed up my life, not the diagnosis, the ADHD. <laughs> as soon as you, from that point on, the doctor everything got worse. Gavel. Like for one the of the ADHD things, entered your body. Like genuinely, like one of the things that I, the, the doctor said I had ADHD, and suddenly everything <laughs> fell apart. No, one of the things I mentioned was that I've been doing this podcast for about what three and a half years at this point, and I can count on like both hands probably the number of times I've had an episode. I can count on one hand the number of times I've had an episode finished like more than a day in advance. Yeah. If we're talking like I I I just can't I can't do it until there's that time pressure. And that's yeah. just one of the things. Think about just that. That aspect of <laughs> not being able to do something that you do weekly until like the day the, before the last, you need to you know, do it. Yeah. The day that you need to get it done. Think of that. But then apply that to literally every single thing in your life and not just everything like going to school going to meet your friends brushing your teeth i have a toothbrush <laughs> you do and some toothpaste and some toothpaste you know why i've got this in the studio it's because i need to have it here so that i can remember to brush my teeth before i film or that if i'm working up here for hours on end because i've got caught on this caught on some work i can still like have somewhat somewhat okay personal hygiene <laughs> i have phone chargers in every room of my house so i don't have to pick it up and like put it somewhere and that's, lose it that's smart. i have specific i have hooks for my keys so i don't lose them i have specific yeah. pockets for my phone so i don't lose it i have multiple deodorants like literally every single place i might need to use deodorant so i don't misplace it i actually have that as well yeah, yeah right yeah, like yeah. it's really useful I'm by my bed because i always go to bed yeah. and recognize me but yeah i'm like i don't want to get out of bed so bed. <laughs> bed bathroom gym bag oh, studio for yeah. some reason there's one in a drawer over there i don't know why but you know i mean like and that's just me right that's just me with adhd think about if someone has body dysmorphia and they hear, you know, some like, uh, some sixteen year old TikTok being like, "Oh, my body dysmorphia is so bad," or like, you know, if you if you if you think that you look bad one day and then you don't think you look bad, and like, you know, a few days later, you've got body dysmorphia. If someone is like 
watching their life implode before their eyes because they feel that they look hideous. <sighs> Seeing someone say, I look bad today, and that's that's dysmorphic. Like it's that's not very that's not a very nice thing, you know? And it makes it harder to talk about your experiences because if I was to be like it it's one of those things where you know, you talk about depression, you talk about being depressed, you talk about mental illness, and someone would be like, Oh man, yeah, I was I was so depressed, you know? And you're like, Oh, well like why? Oh well, you know, um It's a very normal thing to be sad about happening. Yeah, like uh, my my <laughs> oh, dog my died and yeah, I and I had to take died. a day off work, you know? Yeah. Um, Ooh, and like I, I felt I felt sad eyes. for a couple of weeks, mm. and it's like, damn, no, nope. how'd you survive? Your dog died. That's I, your dog thing, doesn't know so. you felt sad about <clears throat> what? The word no. is grief. I I wake up and I wake up and I'm thinking, man, being alive sucks, doesn't it? Like, that, there's Why these are not the, like yeah, these are not the same sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? And that's not to invalidate any of these experiences. They're all perfectly valid, and I'm not saying this one is worse than the other one, and it's so much harder to deal with, and that makes me better, or that makes me blah blah blah. All I'm saying is that since our experiences differ so wildly, it makes sense to be able to use sort of these sort of differing terms for them, right? Mm -hmm. If you sort of appropriate like terms like body dysmorphia or OCD, you're making things more difficult for people that have to deal with those sort of conditions. And I just, I just find that like a really difficult thing to... I find that a really difficult thing to see people do. I find that a really, like, and it's a difficult problem to deal with as well because a lot of it comes down to education, right? People don't know what body dysmorphia is and they learn what it is through the internet in the same way that people learn what, you know, um, emotional labor means on the internet or they learn what <laughs> gaslighting means. And so yeah. if you've been gaslit and then suddenly you see every single person saying, this celebrity gaslit their fans because they lied. <laughs> or like, oh uh, yeah, this 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 company is gaslighting us. No, they're just ignoring your concerns because they're a company and they, they care about profits. Like, we dilute language in some ways. And I know that language is malleable and I know language changes and all of that sort of stuff. And, and I, I'm generally kind of okay with that. You know, like I, I understand that and that that's cool and that's fine. And there's not much you could do about it. But when it comes to, I guess, um, things like this, like, like actual conditions like depression and body dysmorphia or OCD, all of these sorts of things, I feel like these are things that we should try to avoid diluting in that way. You know what I mean? Because then we're just going to have to come up with another term for this and it's not going it, to... It's just... It's a constant game of sort of playing catch-up, you know? Mm -hmm.